My name is Marnie Norris, and I'm the Senior Vice President of Programs for Inclusion Matters by Shane's Inspiration. And all of you know who we are, so um, we're not going to spend a lot of time reminding you all, because many of you we've worked with for, oh, about 17 years now. So we're thrilled that you're here. I want to introduce Jennifer Quick. Jen, take it away. Hello, everybody. I'm Jennifer. Um, yes, I know many of you, and I am the Education Program Manager for Inclusion Matters. So welcome, everybody. Yeah, welcome, welcome. Um, and we're thrilled. So we've done a few of these Lunch and Learns, and we're thrilled to have um, something that I think is going to be probably one of the most important Lunch and Learns, which is how do we get kids moving right now, um, both in terms of adaptation skill development, but also in terms of um, fun and motivation. So um, I'm thrilled to introduce Miguel Tyndall. Um, he's taught in LUSD for the past 13 years. Um, he's worked with kids of all ages, stages, and abilities. Um, and he's got a great YouTube channel, which we're going to put in the chat box shortly. Um, that's the LAAPEs, and it's just continuing that skill progression, skill development, so that um, our folks can continue moving and grooving, even though we're moving and grooving from home right now. So, um, Miguel, I'm going to let you take it away and introduce okay. yourself, and then I'll start your PowerPoint. Okay, well, my name is Miguel Tyndall, and I've been, um, as Marnie was saying, I, I've taught with uh, Los Angeles Unified School District for about 13 years. Um, I actually worked before that as a special ed aide and I did some substitute teaching. So I've been working in, um, you know, in special education for a while now, um, but I specialize in adaptive PE. I have a credential in physical education as well, um, but most of my experience has been working with um, students with special needs. Um, and, you know, I've worked with all age groups. Right now, specifically, I'm working with preschool to elementary, but I've worked with students all the way up to high school. Um, as well, because we we teach we teach all grade levels. Um, I have three three kids myself, so I'm also um, you know here at home doing what you guys are doing with with my with my own children, and actually they're in a lot of the videos that I have. Um, so I feel like that's actually might be more helpful for you know if you guys want to go look at my channel and and use some of the videos where I'm doing instruction um, on t on on YouTube because. You know, it's always nice to have other, um, other if, you, if you have your own children, I think they'd rather look at other kids doing PE as well. So I do find I'm, I'm lucky in that way because I know some of the people, <laughs> some of the other teachers don't have that, that option. Um, so anyways, I just moving into what, um, what, what I'm going to be presenting. Um, I know Mar uh, Marnie was saying that um, a, lot of, a lot of the parents and teachers, I actually saw one of the teachers that I used to work with at one of my schools said hi to me on, on there. Um, <laughs> so, uh, you know, um, I know a lot of, um, a lot of, a lot of students, you know, there's a lot of uh, parents with children with autism as well. So I wanted to focus um, somewhat on that, but also, um, you know, a lot of the, the, the um, you know, th things that I recommend on here are also for good for all students, you know, any, any child with a disability or, um, you know, it's helpful for, for everyone, you know, even with kids, that, you know, without disabilities as well. I use that with my, my, my children here at home. But I did find when I taught that these, um, these, these, these uh, techniques and strategies worked um, really well with, with children with autism. Um, so I don't know if we want to start the PowerPoint now. You bet. So I'm going to share my yeah. screen. Okay, and we will get started. All right. Okay, here we go. Okay, we can go to the next next one. That was just the intro that I talked about. Um, so the first thing um, that I that I wanted to um, bring up was was visual schedules. Um, starting with, uh, I actually had a picture. It's on the next page, but we don't have to probably show it just yet. Um, after after this, I'll show you what the visual schedule that I I utilize and. One, one area, you know, one way that I found this technique was actually a lot of the um, BIIs that work with my students, they, they were using these visual schedules with their, with their um, students when I was doing PE, because a lot of times when I'm doing PE, I just, I just start the routine, but I noticed a lot of them would ask me, okay, what's the schedule, and they would write it down for them, so the students could actually visually look at it, and 
I think it's helpful if they can do like a checkoff, like, okay, we're doing a warm up, and then we're doing, um, you know, the main activity, and then we're doing the closing activity and how long each of those activities are. Because I think students, um, children with autism, and just in general, children like a nice structured, I think they do better with a very structured routine as well. Um, so that just helps them kind of have a maybe more of a goal when they're doing it saying, okay, I know there's this and there's this and there's this. Um, and then the next thing is when I, I always do the same warm up routine and I find that helpful because once the students get to know it, it's just especially students with um, autism. Um, they're, you know, I, I think they just, they, they look forward to some, some, um, regularity at first you know before you move on to something that's different especially for students with autism because you know their routine is everything and it kind of gets them comfortable as well um but i i and one thing i want to want to um preface with is i know as parents you guys know your 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 children more than anyone does right so you know everything i'm saying here might not work with your with your child um and you guys could customize this but this is these are things that worked for me with as when i do groups um um, at, at the school site. Um, so I always started with a simple warm up, warm up, and usually I always use a song. I love, I love using music because I find that it's more engaging and motivational for the students. Um, and I actually don't necessarily start with music. I, I start with some simple stretches. And um, I have my own warm up routine on YouTube. And that's, this is a warm up routine I use at, at um, when I'm teaching at the school sites. So if you guys want to go and see what I do, and if you, you know, it's easy enough just to click on it and have your, have your students follow along with me. So I start with some stretches and exercises first, then I move on to a song called um, Listen and Move, which a lot of you may have used before. And if there's a lot of teachers here, which I saw one of the teachers I worked with, I know they use the, this song before. It's a very well-known song <laughs> in the teaching world, Listen and Move. Um, but I use it almost every time with my warm up, um, just because they enjoy it. And sometimes I'll switch up songs too. Um, I have another song that I've, I've used in my warm up as well, and I was going to show it to you guys at the end of this because it's a nice, simple one to do. Um, and then, of course, move on to the main activity, um, which can be different every time. And th having the same, having the same initial warm up routine helps them transition to activity that could be that's obviously going to be different. Um, you know, either week to week or sometimes day to day, depending on, you know, whether they're in elementary or secondary. Um, so I close with a simple song and um, the song that I use is called Jim Along Josie and I put a link to it right here. Um, I like that song. It works for me. And so I just figure you guys are looking for resources and um, that's the song I use and I linked it right there. So you can go on YouTube if you guys ever want to use that song. And it's, and actually Jim Along Josie, that's good if you guys, if, if you, if you just want to have some movement, some simple movement and do a song where, you know, they do a exercise and then they cool down and you can kind of, they can be kind of calm at the end because it lets them sit down and, and relax. Um, okay, we can go on to the next slide. And this is just an example of um, the visual schedule that, I, that I've that i used. Um, like I said, I actually got the, this idea when I saw the BIIs using this for um, when I worked with students with autism because um, it, they, they really just did much better when they had a, a visual schedule and sometimes they would just check it off themselves. Um, and some, some of them also used uh, timers and I was gonna talk about that in one of my other slides as well, um, where they would have a timer and and the students could actually see the timer ticking down. So maybe if they were getting a little bit anxious about the activity, they can say, okay, you only have this much more to go. And then they would give them some positive reinforcement, like, oh, you did it, you know, and the timer's up. Maybe they could even take a break before the next activity. Um, so that's just a simple, it's really simple. I think the more simple it is, the better. So that's literally how I, I would say you could do a visual um, schedule, but you guys can, customize that any way you would like to. Um, we can move on to the next one now. Um, so some of these are some of the um, different strategies that I've used with students with autism. And like I said, they can be used with, with students of all different abilities. And um, you know, I've worked with students of all different disabilities. So, um, you know, 
um, these, these are, these are things, not just with yoga, but you know, the, I mean, not only with kids with autism, but yoga works. I mean, dance works. Every, they all, every, every, every child I work with loves, loves all those different activities. Um, but for, you know, students with autism, the sensory calming of yoga and dance, the movement, they, they do really well with that. And these are some of the, um, the links that I, I put on there that, um, for being at home, and even when I'm at school, I've used these. Cosmic Kids Yoga, I feel like that is um, really a, a great channel. I use that at, at home here with my own students. And um, I don't, you, some of you guys may have already used, used these channels before because they're pretty popular. But I really like Cosmic Kids Yoga because the engagement level is, 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 is that's, what I, that's what I like about it is, is how the, the, the teacher or the instructor on there really engages the kids with these awesome backgrounds and like they'll have like fr you know a frozen theme and all these different themes for um you know all uh, different disney movies and you name it they have it so you know i think the kids really enjoy watching those and doing the movements and it's it's just really engaging for them which brings us to the engagement part which i think is very important um with, with especially being at home you really want them to be engaged and it's you know especially for for as a parent you you already have you guys already have enough to do so sometimes if if they're willing to do this on their own this is a nice way for you guys to be able to take a step back and and just you can turn on the video and and something they can do with and be fully engaged hopefully um, another area is dance and gonoodle.com or on YouTube, Go Noodle also has a channel as well. And um, like I said, this is something I use at school that I know a lot of other adaptive PE teachers use it, um, teachers in general. I actually found it um, when I was going to a, um, a class for kids with autism and they were using the Go Noodle and I was walking there and they'd all be doing it. And I was just amazed that they, they just love doing that, all those different dances on there. Um, and there really wasn't much the teacher had to do, you know, obviously at first they, they kind of had to walk them through it, but once they had the routine and they had their favorite videos on Go Noodle, the, the kids just did them. Um, so I thought that was, I thought that was great. And I've used it ever since too. And I, um, like I said, I have all these links on my YouTube channel. So if you really don't want to have to go all over the internet or YouTube trying to look for these videos that, that, that we've all found work really well, you can just go to the YouTube channel and it should all be there. And, um, you know, we, uh, as well, there's a lot of us as teachers are on there too, doing actual lessons. Um, moving on to the next section. So, um, getting outside is obviously very important right now. Um, if you, if you can, you know, go outside and I put a link to, um, a nature walk lesson over there too. Um, oh, sorry. Go back to the other slide, Marie, that one visualize. So going to the, um, Actually, the uh, just back to the visual ways with the pictures. Yeah, this one. So we're sold on this one. Um, so the next thing I wanted to say for um, for all students, really, and but I felt like it particularly worked for um, children with autism is visual aids. Um, just showing them a picture of the skill that you are practicing. Um, I put just some random stuff up here, but they're not kind of categorized. But for for fitness. I had a picture of jumping jacks. Um, there's animal walks as well. Um, you know, so there's like the frog jump and then there's a bear for the, for the bear crawl. Um, you know, and, and those are just ways to make it, make it more fun. Um, and uh, obviously there's catching and kicking. I have pictures of that. And sometimes just showing those pictures really helps them, you know, especially if they're nonverbal. I know there's a lot of students that are nonverbal. Um, so having them, see see what they're going to be doing sometimes can be very helpful as well all right so we can move on to the next slide okay and that um i put a link to my channel or well i should say our channel because i have a lot of teach, uh, teachers coming on board to post their videos um on our youtube channel and they've they've all been great they they've helped you know really add a lot to the channel and making a lot of different lessons that, that are taught by adaptive PE teachers. So if you want something that's specifically, not just you know going to Go Noodle, but going and looking at a lesson that's taught by an adaptive PE teacher, um, you can go on here. But also I link all the other things like Go Noodle, Cosmic Kids Yoga. Um, there's a lot of different songs we recommend and I kind of have them categorized by playlists. 
So um, for the teachers and the parents, is you know, for PE, I think this it's a great. I I worked hard to kind of you know get all this stuff organized on the channel. So feel free to go on there and and use it. Um, yeah, I think that covers that part. Um, and then um, we could, I could, I was, I was thinking of doing a, um, a, a quick little song with uh, my, my girls here. So let me see if I can get them over here and then we can do it before I hand it off to, to Ceci here real quick. All right, these are my daughters right here. This is Kayavani and this is Kalia. And this, this is a, just a song that I've done as a quick um, activity song, or you guys use it. I use it a lot as a warm up. I'm just going to get the song here on my phone. Um, but we're going to go ahead and do it for you. You guys ready? Okay. And we'll have fun, fun, fun. Yes, we're going to have some goodness okay. fun. Yes, we're going to have some goodness channel um, we have a balloon video um, and balloons are really great as well because they they go down so slowly and it helps for catch for for catching skills as well and sometimes I tie a little string to it and it allows you to kick the ball um, and these are really good if, if kids are in wheelchairs or they have mobility issues or just in general if they can't move their arms as fast the balloons nice because it goes down really slowly Okay, so balloons, I feel like if you're ever at the store, always see if you can get some balloons because I think for in-home PE in small spaces like this, balloons are great. Otherwise, beach balls are good too, but I feel like I use balloons all the time. It's a great tool to have. Even at school, I use that a lot, but um, I think in a home, having a balloon for catching, you can tie a string onto it and they can kick it. Um, throwing, it's not as good, but... You know, um, I can also link, I think I, I had a handout for uh, do-it-yourself uh, key equipment at home if you don't have access to a lot of balls or like one of them is a rolled-up sock. It's really good. It's nice and soft as well, so you can practice catching and throwing with that. Okay, so I think that does it for us. You girls say goodbye. Bye. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you guys were wonderful. Um, so we, just so you know, once we start the question and answer period, um, Miguel, thank you. That was really, that was, yeah, that was awesome. Um, and he's created amazing, amazing tips and tools and handouts that are going to make just providing, um, you know, skill development in an engaging way. So we're going to put all of those into the chat box. So once we open it up to questions, we will put all of the, um, the handouts that he's created and I put his YouTube link in the chat box. So that's available for everybody to check out as well.
Okay. And then, so once we're done with introducing Ceci and working with her, um, then we're gonna open it up to questions. So we're gonna use the raise your hand function. So if you go to participants, um, you should see a raise your hand function. So once we finish up with Ceci again, so um, Beth just put it into the chat box. Thank you, the directions for raising your hand. So once we're done with Ceci, we're gonna circle back around, um, load up all of those great handouts into, um, into the chat box and then start the Q and A, okay? So we are going to move on to Ceci Morgan. She has a background in kinesthesiology and over 22 years of teaching experience from um, all ability levels from preschool on. So Ceci, we're gonna let you take it away and tell more about who you are, and then we'll, we'll dig into your great videos and conversation. Okay, okay, so yeah, so I'm um, Ceci Morgan, and um, I work for LA Unified. I've been teaching in the West Side for, um, I think the last seven years, and prior to that, I was about 14 years in the Mid-City area. So, um, I can't believe it's it's that many years. It's gone by so fast. I just um, I'm gonna start crying. I love my job and I love the kids, and um, I'm just looking forward to getting back. Yeah. So um, yeah. since we're at home, I've um, created a couple videos, and um, I I just started. So I'm I'm learning technology. It's it's not my comfort zone. Um, nor is presenting for that matter. <laughs> You're <laughs> but, doing great. Um, <laughs> but um, anyway, um, the first video that I created, it's, um, it's an obstacle course um, with just simple um, household items, towels mostly, and some pillows. Um, so we can go ahead and share that and to start with. Hello, it's Miss Sessie. I'm going to show you how to do a real easy obstacle course at home. To start with, I just grab a towel, place it across the sofa and table. Hopefully you have a rug or a yoga mat, something for the little ones to crawl on so they don't hurt their knees on wood floors. Have them crawl through the tunnel. Over here, I've set up some towels that I just rolled up as hurdles. You can use um, tennis shoes, towels, anything really, just for your child to jump over. What you're looking for is using two feet See if they can jump over each hurdle. Some little ones like to do a step jump. And that's okay. But what we really want to try to see and get our kids to work up to is with two feet jumping over each hurdle. Over here with the longer towel, um, I just rolled up a beach towel. Think of that as a balance beam. So placing one foot in front of the other. Here, let me show you this way. Placing one foot in front of the other. You can have your hands out for balance. Place one foot in front of the other. And then, I'm going to move you. Hopefully you don't get seasick. So after the balance beam, you see these pillows here? Have your child crawl over the pillows. Think of them as boulders. That'll work as some heavy loading for your little one's body. And then after the boulders, you'll notice we are back at our tunnel. Crawl through the tunnel, two feet together, jump over the hurdles, placing one foot in front of the other, arms out for balance, walk across your balance beam, crawl across those boulders and back through the tunnel. Thank you. Okay, so that was just um, a simple idea of um, an obstacle course you can put together, um, especially if you have limited space. Um, unfortunately, I don't have kids, so I couldn't exactly model um, the whole obstacle course for you. But it's good to have kids, um, when you're doing an obstacle course or really anything, to have them repeat the action, um, just typically a skill will develop the more, the more familiar something becomes to them, then their, their skills will start to, to shine a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So that's the obstacle course. Um, for children who um, have limited mobility, I do an obstacle course at school and, and I do have a friend who is in a, um, is in a wheelchair 
and she always wants to crawl the whole thing. And the one at school is, is pretty large and I don't always have yoga mats for all the um, components of it, but she doesn't care. She's just such a trooper. And um, I'll have uh, cones set up in a row and she'll kind of do an agility crawl, if you will. So, um, so we do that with her and then, and then provide support at her way so she can step over the hurdles that I have at school. So um, that's just a modification if, um, if you want to give it a try at home. So um, the next video I have, it's, it's mostly a tutorial for parents um, to work on skill development and how to progress through skills with your children in, in, various, um, in various skills for, for catching, kicking, throwing. So if we can switch over to, to that one. Yeah. Hi, I'm going to share with you a tutorial of skill progression that you can work on with your children at home. When catching, start with something large. And then progress to something small. Start near. And then back up and increase the distance. So from large to small, near to far. You can go from predictable, to unpredictable. With bowling, again, start near, Too far, we went from six pins to one, which is going to increase accuracy. So you really need to aim. Mm -hmm. So here you'll see I have a stack of cups. This is good for cause and effect. When your children are doing any skill, Cause and effect will help keep them motivated. So I have my sock, I'm looking at my target, and I'm gonna throw. Now you'll notice we threw with the cups on the sofa. That keeps the noise level down. If you're sensitive to sound, having anything fall on something soft, like with the bowling pins or on the doormat, the cups are on the sofa, the softness will um, cushion the sound of the throw of the objects falling. Here I have just one cup. So again, we went from a lot to a few to work on accuracy. So I'm going to hold my object, step, and so here I've created an indoor badminton court. Instead of just working on a skill only, after working on skills, it's always fun to have a little lead up game. So that way the skills have meaning. Here we're going to play indoor badminton. And you only play games once your child has developed <laughs> I'm the winner! Once your child has developed the, um, the skill to go ahead and progress up to this point. And again, cause and effect works well with kicking. So I have my target of cups on a mat so the noise doesn't bother my ears or the neighbors below me. I have my ball. I'm going to look at my target, step, and kick. So just to recap, when we're working on skill progression, think large to small, near to far. Slow to quick is another one and predictable to unpredictable. To keep kids motivated, oftentimes having a cause and effect will pique their interest, and also go from simple skill to simple game. Thank you. So yeah, so that was just, um, just a quick guide on how to um, work with your children to um, go through different skills. So. You know, again, it really, um, it just depends where, where their skill level is, where their skill level is, 
And as you know, we, we learn so much from, from our kids, from your kids, um, as, to, as to where to start. Um, oftentimes I'll meet a student, I'm not quite sure, you know, can they throw, can they not throw? Um, and you just look at their bodies and, and, and even if they can't verbally tell you, their bodies will tell you what they can do, what they do need. Um, and, and I do have um, quite a few little ones who they can't exactly throw just yet. So I'll just hold like a, tam a sand bucket above their heads and just have them reach because that'll start that throwing motion is mm -hmm. just reaching and, and letting go. And, and some kids, they, they don't want to let go. So that's, that's the first step. So just look at your kids, see where they're at. And, and you really can't go wrong. You just keep, you just keep building up. And, um, and like I said, I do like cause and effect. And, and the best thing with PE and, and kids and to work on motivation is um, success. As long as your kids feel successful and you see success, they'll stay on task a lot longer. If something's too hard, um, you know, they'll shut down. I shut down if things are too hard. It's just um, the kids really aren't any different than, than we are. So yeah, I think that's about it. Oh, that was awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and Ceci, you also created a YouTube link, correct? Um, I just For some of these? <laughs> I just recently made some videos. Um, I, I mean, I guess it's a link. I, what I want to do is to go ahead and put my videos with, with Miguel and just kind of share that, share that way. But, but yes, technically right now, if you looked up Ceci Morgan YouTube, you would find um, a few videos. Okay, very cool. Miguel, can you unmute for a second? Um, so now we're going to start opening it up to questions. Um, before we do that, I just wanted to ask you both, and I think, Ceci, you covered this as well in what you just said, but, you know, what we're, what we're hearing, what we're feeling as parents right now <sighs> is, number one, our kids are on screens a lot, um, which can make motivating um, from the focus on the screen to physically moving in the world um, pretty tricky. So, you know, and parents are overwhelmed by the task of having to engage and, and get their kids physically moving. So, Ceci, you, you brought up a great idea of follow your kid's lead. Um, Miguel, I was just wondering, can you build on that? Like, where do parents start? How do you, you know, because we all are kind of feeling like we have to take it small right now. Um, but where do you think, where would you advise a parent to start with all of this? Um, yeah, as far as not necessarily being on a screen the whole time, correct? Yeah. Yeah. And, and just the, 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 the concept of, of supporting um, APE right now in the, in, at home. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I do believe engagement, obviously, is key. I, I, I agree with what Ceci says, is that you kind of, you, you guys all know your child better than even we do. So we obviously present <laughs> these videos and a lot of them are different skills that we are going to practice at you know at the school site but when it for you guys at home and i know with me as a parent too it's tough it's like well you know we're juggling iep meetings for myself and you guys are juggling stuff at home as well with your own child and work possibly working or dealing with your other you know children it, it's tough to find those those you know <laughs> you're trying to you're trying to do so much but you still want them to be be moving you don't want them to be on the screen all the time so um, you know, I do think that leading with, with what you find of interest with them and sometimes just having fun with them and, and finding, a, you know, time to go outside if that, if that at all possible. That's why I gave the, um, that, the um, lesson plan for the nature walk, which is you can make walks in the, around the neighborhood fun sometimes by doing those little things where you have like a, you know, pedometer. You say, hey, let's find out how many steps we can take, you know, just something simple as that or and then maybe taking it to the next level and saying, hey, let's, you know, let's see if we can find pine cones or different leaves or look for what butterflies are out there. You know, obviously, like I said, they, if you know your child, you know what they're interested in, maybe that's not what that interests them. But a lot of students like doing those kind of, or children like doing those kind of things. So um, I agree that leading with what you know engages them um, and being creative with, with that, you know, is really a place to start at first. Um, and then, you know, if you can, obviously you do want to continue some skills <laughs> at home, but I know that can be tough because they're not always interested in those kind of things. And if they don't have their friends with them either, that can pose a problem too. I know for my, my kids, they're lucky to have siblings, but if they don't have siblings, 
you know, or someone to play with, it's just you and them, you know, so it, it is, it is difficult. And, and I think that can be challenging. Um, but like I said, you know, just le following, following their lead to a degree um, and finding what engages them. And then maybe using the strategies that I said, when it is time to try to say, Hey, we're going to practice skill today. And, you know, is there, is there a specific dance video or, or, or some video, maybe let them pick on the YouTube channel, but then, you know, maybe if at some point, if you, you can always not even have the screen on and have just the music playing in the background and you can just do the dance with them or, you know, <laughs> if you want to go off the screen, but um, those are some suggestions, you know, that, that I would, I could think of just even as a parent myself and what I find is useful at home, you know, because it is a different dynamic at school. We have a group and we have teachers, we have support staff at, at home. It's, you know, it's, it's you and them and <laughs> you don't have that same support. You don't have the other kids there. At home. So there is, there is definitely challenges. And this is something new for even us as teachers to try to say, wrap our heads or heads around to try to say, what can we give you guys as suggestions? So, you know, so we might even be learning from you guys to say, Hey, this works and this doesn't. <laughs> so sometimes maybe giving feedback to your teacher, I think is also saying, Hey, they don't, they don't like this. And but they do enjoy this that you gave them and that can help us kind of strategize more for what we're going to do as, as your child's APE teacher. Because I honestly, this is new for us. We're used to going to the school site. We have all these resources. We have our own equipment. We, <laughs> you know, we have a lot, but, but here at home, it is, it's, it has, this is different. This is something we've, we've never experienced either. Yeah. I think the, the phrase we're all in this together um, is incredibly relevant. <laughs> yeah. It really, it really is. Um, Pamela, okay, oh, I'm sorry, hang on one sec. I just want to share Pamela um, in the chat said stuffed animals are great items to throw and catch too. Right? Yes. And, yeah, because yeah. there's an emotional, fun too, right? an emotional engagement there. That. Mm -hmm. hey, that's, a, that's a great example. Yeah. A great Ceci, example. Sorry, Ceci, you were going to do that. Um, I was just going to say one thing that I really enjoy with, with my students um, and, and my kids, especially I have um, a few students who are on the spectrum who don't, who don't care for sports, but, but they like books. And I have a, a couple books that I, I refer back to all the time. I don't know if you guys are familiar with From Head to Toe by Eric Carle. It's a great one. And you can, um, you know, it has different animals and you can also engage um, language. So you, you can do the physical activity in the book. You can ask questions um, like with the seal, for example, where, where have you seen a seal? Where do seals live? Um, what do you think seals like to eat? You know, um, different things like that. Another one I like to use is um, You Are a Lion, which is really cute. And you can easily adapt these if, you're, if your children are um, in, in wheelchairs or have limited mobilities. And, you know, it's, um, it's just real simple, real simple little yoga poses. Um, so, you know, books, books work really well, too. Um, not necessarily with skill development, gross motor skill development, but at least with reading and and it's just kind of nice to have that quiet time with with your children and just just share a book i mean i remember even as a kid i loved reading you know with, with my with my parents and and when i used to babysit i like reading was always the thing for for all the kids it was just a nice quiet time to just share to share together and um and share a story i loved um Ceci, i loved your idea about um in terms of skill development um about reaching into the bucket you know, so even if it's just a very simple physical movement, and even if it's one that mom and dad may need to support or a sibling can support, mm -hmm. um, you know, I think those are incredible tips for folks because yeah. that's that is still you're still yeah. and that's getting some skill progression. But yeah, for the ones who aren't quite throwing yet, just you know, I pretend like they're putting a letter in the mailbox or you know, or put a favorite toy in or even reach a favorite toy out, you know, something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Does anyone have any questions? I'd love to open it up or, or just anything that's working for you as a parent or as a fellow colleague. Um, so if anyone has any questions, please feel free to raise your hand so that we can, we can have Ceci and Miguel answer them. Or if you want, if you have any follow-up questions or follow-up needs, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and type my email into the chat box. So I just popped my, name, my email in there, as well as the search links for You Are a Lion and From Head to Toe. So do we have any questions, comments, anything that 
Any more information you guys would like to see? No, you guys, everybody good? All right, my friends. Well, let me know. Yeah, let me know. And thank you, Ceci and Miguel. Thank you so much for sharing this today. For us. I know the more the more information I get as a parent, I have like I feel a little more of an exhale. <laughs> it's like, ah, okay. There's there's really bite-sized usable info that I can use and, and I can help my child just keep moving forward every day. Um, so we put all of the wonderful downloads into the chat box. Just so you know at the end of this, we are gonna be sending out everybody, all of the the downloads are all going to be together. Ceci and Miguel's um, incredible information. So hopefully you guys can access, access it. Um, and thanks for joining us. We're going to have another Lunch and Learn next Friday. Um, and it's going to be looking at inclusive playgrounds on school campuses. So we're going to have an expert in design. We're going to have a wonderful special education um, resource teacher who built one on her campus. And just look at like the how-tos. How do we dream up once we're back together on school campuses again, which we will be. <laughs> someday we will be um, just you know dreaming and, and thinking what can you do on your campus so that'll be next Friday so we'll send out an invite for that all right you guys Miguel thank you Ceci thank you thank you so, thank much. You so much for being with us today and have a great weekend everybody thank you everyone thank you for coming <laughs> bye, thanks bye bye Miguel bye Ceci thank you